Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another tips and tech video. So in a previous video I was talking about building a garage and all the little components that come in model car kits and whatnot that will help you to build and design your own garage by having accessories and tools and everything else that you need. So from the last video what I've done is I got my toolbox together here or my tool cabinet parts cabinet and I made up the little stickers for the front saying what everything is so here I have toolboxes hand tools shop tools fire extinguishers tow truck parts air compressor welding equipment cinder blocks car jacks jack or sorry car ramps batteries and testers pistons and cranks uh, gas jugs and oil cans brake or bikes and wagons barrels and jugs signs, trophies, uh, sanch or stanchions, then what do I have here? I have guns, safes and cases, stuffed animals, record players, TVs and phones, CB radios, surfboards, and then down below I've got some other parts in these drawers like the uh, benches and the little sign posts. Actually they're easels. And then I've got some of the tow truck wenches in here, but I've got five empty drawers down below. And uh, what we can do today is a look at some more parts. And I've got some other sources for 125th scale and 124th actually, something that I discovered that's actually quite cool. So let's go down again to the bench and I'll show you other parts for your garage dioramas. First off, I want to show something that's a little bit funny that I found from the AMT 1950 Ford Convertible Kit. This is from a slightly earlier instruction sheet. I'm not sure if the newest one has this, but I thought this was kind of funny. Congratulations! You won first place with your fully restored 50 Ford Custom Deluxe Convertible. Here's your trophy. And then it shows, like, the car being glued onto the little pedestal here, and then that little pedestal being glued onto the main pedestal. So, dun dun da da ba ba dun dun da da ba ba Congratulations! You won your first place with your fully restored 50 Ford Custom Deluxe Convertible! Dun dun da da Here's your trophy! Dun dun da da But then, just underneath that trophy here, it says, Run out of money partway through your project? Here are some cement blocks to prop up in your redneck special in the backyard. So in case you're wondering what the trophy looks like, here are the components. There's the little top pedestal, the car, and the base. AMT's 1936 Ford comes with this wonderful looking trophy as well as this trophy base. And you would cut this off the parts tree and then clean this edge up, of course, but from your flash and then put this into the trophy base just like that. If you want to know where I got all the trophies and the easels and the stanchions from, these were included in the AMT customizing series kits from the 1980s, the late 80s. And again, like what you got is the plaque here and the stanchions, as well as the trophy, a little chrome car, and then these trophies here for first place, as well as the cup and the two-piece cup. And then there's the easel to tell everybody what's going on with your car. The AMT 1950 Ford convertible also includes this TV screen as well as this console, and this would mount inside the interior along the floorboards right on the transmission hump. But you could also just cut this down here with your saw and fill in the gap with some uh, evergreen styrene and build a standalone TV that's tilted up at a bit of an angle. Here's a disc brake rotor and a jack stand which is included in the AMT 1963 Ford Galaxy kit. Here we have the custom accessories which come in with the AMT 1963 Ford Galaxy. We have a mascot, which again is a little stuffed animal. We've got some bongos for some musical instruments. Here's the two-piece car trophy with the bass and the car on the top. It also has a TV set in there, slightly different from the 50 Ford. And then we have a two-piece telephone, a two-piece record player. This would mount underneath the car dashboard, but you could always adapt this so that you've got speakers coming out of the back of it or something like that for in your garage. 
this would use 45 records on it. And then here we have a fire extinguisher down below. Here's what the parts look like, and I'm not going to take them off the parts tree for this video because I'm going to use them later on. But I can show them to you. That's a certainty for sure. So what we have is the AMT TV set here. And this is more like a smaller one. I don't know if that would be Philco or who would make that. But it does have AMT on the screen. So if you want to remove that, just use that number 16 hobby blade and carefully scrape it off from there. And then apply your own image on the top. It is a fairly flat TV without a back. So if you wanted to make this look more like how it should, just build a little plastic box on the back with evergreen styrene and glue it into place. You can even add some rabbit ears on the top if you want. There's the telephone with the receiver and the dial right down here. Here we have our bongos. Again, you can see they're pretty cool. And uh, what else do we have? Well, let's move over to this parts tree. There's the stand for the jack stand for the uh, disc brake that's on the car. We also have the mascot here and the trophy base bottom. On the chrome parts tree, you will find that disc brake as well as the little car. AMT's 1957 Ford model kit has this stuffed puppy in there, which is an optional piece to glue on the back of the rear package shelf. What's happening in Chevrolet for 1957 in the AMT kits? Well, check this out. Here's some really cool features. So here we have a Tiki floor shifter for your transmission. And back here, we've got an alligator. And that's really awesome. And if I move the parts tree even further up, we also have an engine stand. And engine stands come in a lot of the different kits. There's many different styles, so look out for them. There's uh, one in the 49 Mercury kit as well as some in the 34 um, Ford pickup truck. Now, if you're looking to go camping, check out some of these cool accessories from the old MPC van kits. These were found in the Dodge van kits. So here we've got a kitchen sink, we've got a cabinet, and a little tiny oven, I believe that's what that is. We also have a long bed and some bed rolls, or just the passenger seat with a table here. I stand corrected. It's not actually an oven, it's another TV set. But what we have here is the sink, and we have the cabinet, and then there's the bed. So just looking at the cabinet, the only downside to this is in order to get it out of the mold, they couldn't make this perfectly square. So it's actually kind of diamond shape, or rhombus shape, I guess, with this having a bit of an angle. So your cabinet is actually leaning downward but at any rate there's the sink going in there and then the tv is just supposed to mount up here but again you can see just how cool this kind of stuff is once you have it all assembled in your kit here on this parts tree are the goodies that come in the amt 1963 chevrolet impala kit so what we have is a rabbit right here we have the back of a TV and the front of the TV. This one does have the rabbit ears in and looks a little bit actually later, but I guess it is a 63 TV set. Then we have the speakers for our record player, which we'll see in a minute. There's the trophy with the cross flags. And uh, if I turn this around this way, there's our, our, our drive-in tray. So this would be for your drive-in food clips on the side of the car. We also have the two-piece record player. So again, the speakers are back there, but here's the top of the record player and the record player itself. It looks like there's a lot of mold release agent on this, so I'm going to have to wash these down with soapy water. Over onto our parts tree of the 63 Chevy Impala, we have the bodyworking paddles as well as the ball peen hammer, a screwdriver, adjustable wrench or adjustable spanner as Pete would call it. We also have a pair of pliers and two wrenches. The decal sheet of the 1963 Chevy also includes some TV screens, so you could use them on that TV set or maybe even recut them carefully and add them onto the TVs of the other models. Here's two other electronic components which are really cool and are found in AMT's 1965 Lincoln Continental kit. Right here we have a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck as well as two telephones that mount up on the dashboard. Again, really cool type stuff. 
If you take a look at the reel-to-reel -reel player, it's quite amazing. You can see the tapes right on the top, as well as all the controls and the read head for the uh, tape recorder. The read-write head, I guess it is. If you're also looking for one of these, there is one in AMT's 1966 Ford Thunderbird kit. Here's the telephones with their mounting brackets, again, hanging off there. Looks kind of cool. You might be able just to mount these somewhere in your shop, maybe against a wall or on the, uh, the edge of your bench. AMT's 1964 Mercury Marauder also has some really cool detail parts for your model cars and garage. Here we have a drum brake. This is the backing plate. And if we just look at the part here, you can actually see the caliper and the pads right there. So that's a two-piece unit, which would go on like that. Or better than that, anyway. <laughs> we also have a telephone right here, a different type of telephone, mounted on a circular base. There's a jack stand right there, which goes for that brake drum and everything. Then we also have a little scissor jack, which is included in the kit. And then if I move over to this parts tree, you can see a trophy display base with a lot of boomerang and 50s elements in it. And over here, we have another little dash-mounted record player. So again, really cool stuff in these kits. You just got to keep digging and you'll find a whole bunch of neat, neat stuff. Included in the most recent AMT 1970 Ford Taxi, we also have this great set of luggage. There are some decals to put stickers on your luggage as well. And we have the lighted taxi sign and the meter. Another great set of parts comes in the Johan 1959 Rambler Wagon. So what we have here is a two-piece bowling ball bag. We also have a cake box and we have luggage in two halves, as well as a cooler case with a lid, and these awesome dual surfboards. The AMT 1929 Ford Woody Coca-Cola Edition, or actually any of them, also included this cool 1970s banana bicycle in it. Here's the frame and the seats, as well as a chain. There's the handlebars, and you get a clear set of wheels and white plastic tires, which you glue on the outside of this. In the last video, I showed some of the cinder blocks from the AMT 50 Ford kit, and someone had mentioned that they were actually in the 34 pickup, and uh, I only remember them ever being from the 50 Ford. However, I do have a set of original instructions for the 34 pickup, because, you know, usually these were the instructions that came in later on, and they didn't never had the cinder blocks, neither did the Lindbergh kit, but if AMT under round two has re-released this with the cinder blocks, then good on them. So I don't have a, you know, the parts here to show you, but I'll show you out of the original instruction sheet. So this pickup truck actually has a whole ton of extra parts, but this is what the uh, gentleman who made that comment was referring to. And yes, here you can see the cinder blocks. So again, I apologize that I didn't realize that these were in this kit originally, and hopefully they're back again. But here we have the hand tools. So we've got our lug wrench. Each one of these has a different socket end on it for different wheels. There we've got our screwdriver, our ball peen hammer, our pliers, our adjustable wrench, as well as more of the wrenches here. And then these, oh, these are actually tire irons. Wow, I really am getting these tools wrong. I thought, I thought they were spoons for leading, but that's even better actually. Uh, it also came with flares, which I hope are back again. And then we've got the cement blocks. There's a different style of engine stand. We also have the hydraulic jack. Now if I move this down a little bit here for the camera, you can see we also had a tire rack. I don't know if this is still around, but you can make one of these yourself as well. Then we have the wrecker, and we have floodlights and lenses, as well as a hook winch handle and the frame. Over here we have a booster battery, we have a fire extinguisher tank and handle and horn, and then we have a two-piece toolbox with the lid and the toolbox. I do believe there are tools molded in this. Here's our gas cans. 
So in the last video I had one that was gas and oil. Maybe these are those. We also have direction indicators and air horns and spotlights and side mirrors. So again for the service truck in here there is a lot of pieces. Same as AMT's 1953 Ford pickup. And in addition there's also this 34 Ford pickup truck trophy which I do have the chrome one of that and the display base. So again, a lot of stuff in that 34 Ford pickup truck. This is a decal sheet which came with the Lindbergh 34 Ford pickup, which again is the AMT 34 Ford pickup. But look at this red Crown gasoline decal. You could use this on an old style gas pump if you want to build one up out of scratch. Use it on either side, front and back, and you would have a nice red crown gasoline gas pump. Sometimes your garage accessories may actually come in the form of decals instead of your basic plastic molded part, as in the case of Ravel's 37 Ford pickup. This was from 1997 from Ravel Monogram, the first edition where the truck is green on the box. Anyway, take a look at these wonderful boxes that you get. All you need to do is cut them out, score them, score the folds, and then glue them all together and you'll have a wonderful checker market box. Now, I did have some other decals that folded up like that and they were luggage from AMT or from Ravel Monogram's 1958 Corvette, the first edition of that. But sadly, I lost them because they were in my decal box, and that decal box went underwater in the 2013 High River Flood. Another wonderful source is the Route 66 Highway Scenes decal sheet. Here we've got highway signs for Route 66, Orange Crush, Burma Shave. We've got a little board game here, the Highway 66 game, Knee High, and Root Beer, Ted's Root Beer as well as these nice pennants and road maps. And I have a variation of this sheet as well. I did uh, cut a hole in it because I wanted a decal out of here. <laughs> Sorry guys, I couldn't find a pure one. This used to be a Pennzoil decal in here. But here we also have a road map. We have, I believe that's a cigarette brand or something. A sign for Indian Motorcycle. We've got Champion Spark plugs on this one. We also have these wonderful... Uh, ooh, what's the flying horse? Um, Mobile One hanging bags right here. And a registered restroom sign. And there again. Man, I should make that uh, fuel pump now. For use as a motor fuel only contains lead, ethanol. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could totally do that. I could make the, uh, what is that, Royal, what was the decal from before, from the 34 Ford? Royal Gold Gasoline or something? And then this goes down below. So here I'm just going to do instructions only. I'm not going to actually show the parts this time around. But what we have here is the 1978 Dodge pickup truck by MPC. And it includes a two-piece jack, two-piece toolbox, and again, more tools like hammers and screwdrivers. Then over here we also have a little motorbike. There's the engine right and left hand side with the frame, the front forks and the wheels. The 78 Dodge truck also includes this great decal sheet with blue sprocket motorcycle repair, which you could turn into a sign for your garage. It also has Bud Winsky's motorcycles down here and just generic motorbikes as well. So you can make up your own signs. Another part it has is the Green Toes Lawn Care Service, which you could use as a sign for your business as well. AMT's 1960 Chevrolet pickup truck also includes a go-kart, and here's the instructions for it. Again, I'm not going to pull this out of the box and show it in the plastic form, unfortunately. I know, I know. Um, we also have these mounting brackets for this go-kart. There are two of them. So you put one toward the back of your truck bed and one toward the front. And then for decals, if I just zoom up here, you can also use these go-kart signs and whatnot for a business as a garage. So you've got Keith Super Service and the go-kart mart. Here's the tractor that comes with the MPC Lotus Indy Turbine car. And you can see the engine being glued together. And then it goes on the frame with the rear axle as well as the shroud for the rear wheels transmission that's that is there's our wheels and the final assembly and this is what the tractor looks like here and i can show you the parts for this 
here they are, some of them anyway. You can see the wonderful detail on here. Look at those solid wheels. Those will be cool all put together and to see the tractor in operation. AMT's recently released 63 Chevy station wagon has a plethora of parts. One of them being this trailer here. And here's those oil can and gas cans again. And this is very much like the one I showed in the last video with that nice top on there. We also have the two-piece toolbox and the torque wrench. And looking at the interior of the 63 Chevy wagon, we have a tape recorder, again a reel-to-reel -reel type, fire extinguisher, here's a squirrel, we also have a two-piece telephone, there is a parachute for drag racing, and a two-piece helmet with the helmet and the face mask. And if that's still not enough for you for the 63 Chevy 2 Nova 400 wagon, we also have a big, huge Chrysler Hemi motor that you can build all these different variations of with different intakes and everything else, and an engine stand. Here we have the chrome parts tree for AMT's 1958 Chevrolet, and this is sort of a dual piece because you are actually supposed to glue it into the engine, but you could leave it out and just fake up the engine by sticking some plastic rod through the hole where the uh, end of the crank is going to come out, because your fan is supposed to glue on here, or the bottom of the pulley or something like that. But basically here is a crankshaft for you that you can put on your bench from the 58 Chevy Chrome Parts Tree. Here we have some components that I found in one of the AMT ambulance kits. And what we have is the light bars up here. And we've got the red bits of the light bars which glue together sort of like a clamshell thing like that. With this being the bottom and that being the top. And then here we have the medical computer as well as the radio. And there's the CB radio part of it, as well as these horns, I do believe. Actually, I'm not sure what those are. There's the CB radio there, so this is some other kind of radio thing. But here we've got a pump-action shotgun, and we have these, like, AK-47 guns and all the rest. I hope this doesn't get demonetized, because I'm saying this. <laughs> but yeah, that's a lot of cool-looking things. Let's take a look at these up close. Remove the lights out of the way. Yeah, there's, I guess this is a diagnostic machine, really. But again, check that out. Maybe this is supposed to be the top of the diagnostic. I'm not too sure. I don't know medical stuff that well. I do know that's a first aid kit, because it says first aid on there. Haha. <laughs> there's a telephone as well, so the ambulance could radio in. Somewhere there's got to be a whip antenna. I must have uh, lost that. But there's different radio bits, CB radios. Uh, maybe heart monitor things. I don't know. Medical equipment. But take a look at these guns on here. <laughs> That's an AK-47, I do believe. I'm not a gun guy. This looks like a Thompson, but with a straight clip underneath, instead of the old round style. And there's another rifle. I don't know if you guys know your rifles, but there's that pump-action shotgun. My name is Horace! <laughs> anyway, see if you know what movie that's from. It's Halloween one, I'll give you that. But yeah, overall, again, more cool parts that you can find in AMT kits. And speaking of guns, these are from the 32 Chrysler kit. So we have a nice chrome-plated pistol. We have this Thompson machine gun, and this one does have the round barrel uh, style bullet clip. Just like back in the 30s. Well, of course, this is from the 32 Chrysler. And then we also have this high-powered rifle with a scope, so that is perfect for sniping. Here's another cool source of 125th scale items that you may not have even known about because I didn't know about it until a customer came in one day and gave me a dollhouse. Now normally dollhouses are 112th scale as we know, which is quite big, but did you know there is something called one half dollhouse scale? Well that basically is 112th scale divided by 2, which gives you 124th scale. Now in this dollhouse 
gift that they gave me. There was a whole bunch of these nutshell news magazines, as well as other pieces from the dollhouse that they weren't going to use anymore. And as you can see, these magazines are quite old. This is from April 1990. And I have two editions of this magazine, which were special ones for the one half scale dollhouse stuff. And here is the other one. And you can basically build these houses. They give you the plans in the proper dimensions and everything. But because this one half dollhouse scale exists, if you want to build houses for 124 scale, just take those dollhouse measurements in 112 scale and divide everything by two. Now check this out. This is one of the articles in the Nutshell News that showcases one of the 124 scale buildings. So here we have a house, and of course the guy's taking this outside and filmed it up against the real mountains in the backdrop. But this car right here is Ravel Monogram's 1930 Packard. It's actually Monogram's 1930 Packard. But yeah, so this is what you're seeing for the scale of this model. And if you check this out, this is the garage for that house. And what's sitting in here? Monogram's 1932 Ford with the rumble seat up. Here's another cool diorama that is in this magazine. You can see the AMT 1929 Ford in here, as well as the Model T. And this is a building, a mercantile building, looking from the top down. Here it looks like the Monogram 1929 Ford, and in the back is the AMT 32 Chevy. This is a garage that the guy built up, a Route 66 one, and here, just like in the Dykes Encyclopedia, is that oil changing ramp that they had, only this time it's sort of set into the edge of the cliff. They call this Somewhere USA, and basically this is a top-down view of the street. And as you can see here, you've got AMT's 1934 Ford sedan, as well as one of the Model T kits, with a bunch of bags in the back or something to go to that mercantile store. Here's another view of the hotel from the top down, and again we can see that 32 Ford sedan. Again, this is really cool stuff. Oh, here's the circular sign. Remember I was saying for the red crown gasoline, I think it was, that you could put it on both sides? That's a Texaco station there, but overall you get the idea. And again, this is really cool stuff. And another cool aspect is inside the magazine. They have this do-it-yourself section where they show you the model home. This was the one that is on the front cover, which is basically that one there. But this is a home that was designed in the 1900s, I believe, somewhere between, oh, from 1908 to 1940. This is a Sears and Roebuck house that you could uh, get the plans for by mail order. So they show you how to build this thing in the magazine. And again, it's really cool. They even give you the plans in the back, showing you like the dimensions you need for all the things that you can build in this magazine. Here's another cool little concept. You've got a bench here with the vise and a bunch of the tools up above with a pegboard backing wall. Now I could use that vise that I showed in the last video to do this and I think that would be kind of cool. Here in the magazine is an article entitled Faded Glory. This is Bill Lankford's model and it says old Mrs. Markson lives in greatly reduced circumstances in one half scale, so 124 scale. And this is supposed to be her house after the Great Depression and her living in the 30s. So, and again, you can see AMT's 1934 Ford right in this corner here. Now check this out. How many of you recognize this model car? Well, this is AMT's 1932 Ford Victoria. And look, this guy is washing it with a garden hose. And it's got all the water coming off as well as a bucket for washing the car. Isn't that cool? I mean, wouldn't you want to do that? And here we have a guy repairing a 32 Packard inside a garage. And this garage actually has living quarters for the mechanic underneath it. And then in this picture, we have a little bit of house renovations going on. And again, we've got another AMT 1934 Ford sedan parked underneath this gazebo kind of thing. And over here, you can see the 32 Chevy. And in this magazine, we also have another Sears and Roebuck mail order house. But if you notice this house, it's almost that shape of the Amnitville Horror House, although the windows are different in here. But again, with these plans, you could make that house from that movie. And here we have a section of the second floor, 
and that shows you all the dimensions you need to build the house. And over here is the house all going together. So you could build this out of something like foam board and use your hot glue gun to hold it all together. And then the other cool thing with this magazine is Joanne Swanson here has come up with all these little buildings that she's made and include in the magazine. And these are little stores that you would find in a mall. So you could adapt these into something else if you're doing a street scene for 125th scale. These are full size, but then just divide all the measurements by two and you get a 125th scale building. And lastly, I have this book that I picked up from my dad's house, so I kind of inherited this. This is The Girl Mechanic by Popular Mechanics, but inside again it has a really cool dollhouse, and I'll show you what this looks like. So this is an Art Deco style dollhouse for you guys that are making a 1940s type diorama. And uh, this is really cool again because it's got the curves and the like round bits in here. Uh, but one thing I found that this dollhouse doesn't really have much going on. It's got a living room, a dining room, and like a bedroom that you get from the top of the stairs. So you can always add a bit in here as extra rooms or something for bedrooms or something else that would be a bit more practical. But here, I'll just zoom in on this image. Check that house out. Isn't that neat? Imagine like a 1941 Ford sitting in the driveway or a Chevy with a teardrop style body and the fat fenders and everything. That would be quite cool to build. So again, this is full dollhouse scale, but just divide all the measurements by half and you'll get it in 125th scale. There's also these cool plans in here to make dollhouse furniture and you could easily scale these down again, divide the measurements by two to get 125th scale. But imagine this couch sitting in the back of a pickup truck being loaded to somewhere else, or even this grand piano. Again, really cool ideas that you can use and re, um, what do you call it? Reuse the idea, re-engineer the idea to get it into the scale you want so that you have something cool for all your dioramas. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where we got to take a look at more little model car parts for your garage dioramas and what kits they were in. Also, I hope you enjoyed the dollhouse books and learning about basically one half scale for dollhouses, which again is dollhouses are in 112th scale and the one half dollhouse scale is 124th. So look for dollhouse stuff when you go out Always remember to bring a figure or something with you so that you can make sure you got the right size because sometimes the dollhouse stuff, it's just not marked what scale it is because they just assume that you know it's 112th. So check those items out next time you're in a hobby shop. And until next time, everybody, let me know in the comments down below if you find more parts, where they're from, what kits they're in, and we'll see you in the next video.